Hey guys, what's up? Scotty from scottsbasesessions.com. Hopefully you're all having a wicked day out there. Gav, are you having a wicked day? I get better every day. <laughs> Gav's day gets better every day. Mine too, because I'm hanging out with you guys. Okay, so today we're talking about six tips for awesome walking bass lines. Walking bass lines are super important. They're one of the critical key things that you should work on as a bass player and that's why I want to talk about them today. And I've categorized this lesson into three different categories because that's what you do with categorizing. You categorize. Number one is your feel, okay? So your feel, and there's two things. Next is your sound, and there's two things. And third is your Note choice. And there might be two things. Maybe there's three. So when it comes to your feel, okay, this is like one of the most critical things about playing a walking bass line. It's the one thing I see people messing up time and time again, okay? He's getting the wrong feel, okay? So first of all, with your feel, do not leave daylight no daylight between notes. Okay, I hear this all the time. Uh, 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 uh. Do not leave any daylight. All of your walking lines should go from one into the next line. You want to hold on that quarter note for as long as possible and really squeeze all the juice from it as possible. Yeah? No daylight, okay? And while I'm on the uh, subject of leaving daylights between notes, make sure you're not playing crap funk swing as well. And that's sort of like this. Humper, 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 humper. Right, it's not that, okay? It's just big, fat quarter notes, four above. Listen to people playing walking bass lines. That's how you're gonna get a good feel for it, right? Now the second one, in terms of your feel, is no crazy triplets or triplet fills triplet fills dig a dig gong so we've all heard these amazing bass players playing walking lines and they put these beautiful triplet fills in dig a dig gong dong that okay line <laughs> you know, it's a ton of fun, but for the most part, everybody kind of uses them too much and it takes away from the actual swing. We think we're adding more swing in, we're actually reducing it by putting dick a gong, dick a gong, dick a gong in all the place, okay? So do not, you know, do too much of this. Yeah, use them sometimes, but be, you know, it's like salt on your food, be sparing with it, okay? And the same thing about the. You know, a lot of student bass players that I see use a lot of those dead notes, um, to, to, you know, and, and go over the top with them. So try not to go over the top with crazy triplet fills or any of those type of articulations. Really focus on that big, wide quarter note. Now, let's talk about your sound because sound is super important. If we've got the wrong sound, eh -eh, it's not going to be good. So your sound, first of all, do yourself a favour, play closer to the neck. Play closer to the neck. Oh, I can't write today. That does say neck. What I mean by that is, okay, if, if I put the tone up here, okay, I can get a vast, a really different tone um, just by putting my hand in a different position on down here on the, um, on the bass. So, get it over near the neck. It's going to give you a much rounder sound. I'm actually going to turn my tone up because I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, but put it over here. If you watch the late, great Victor Bailey, who used to be able to do 
just a fantastic get he used to get that upright vibe going on on, the, on, the, on his jazz bass he used to have his his hand right over here Okay, if I played it down here. It's a much tighter sound. Also, I've got my neck pickup like full on and my bridge pickup all the way off. Same deal if I played it on the bridge pickup like this. Okay, it's too tight. So I'm putting the bridge pickup all the way down, neck pickup all the way up, hand over here now the next thing to take in consideration with your sound is the actual eq of the bass i've kind of talked about this a little a little bit saying you know use the neck pickup Okay, not the bridge pickup if you've got two pickups. Play obviously over the fingerboard here to get that real nice fat plummy sound. But if you've got a tone control, roll it off. Again, it's gonna give that, mm, that fatter sound. I'll actually write this right, get your, get, your EQ right. So also with that, you know, with your EQ, make sure you're not, you know, cranking the treble or scooping the mids out. If you're like a, a mid scooper, bass booster, <laughs> make sure that, you know, you flatten it off a little bit and maybe you like boost the bass a little bit, but definitely with the treble, you don't want to be pushing that. Um, anywhere really past 12 o'clock and with the mid either you don't want to be scooping out either you want to go for a sort of like a really nice uh, you want to have a, a good bit of mid in your sound for sure to help it cut through especially when you're fattening up the sound by turning off your tone on your bass and all of that fun stuff as well now last thing your note choice first off right do not do not over complicate and this sound it's sort of like don't over complicate it don't over chromaticize it um, in our you know when I speak to students of mine a lot of them are always trying to get these crazy chromatic lines I'm like it's okay but hey can we just play the roots the fifths the thirds the sevenths and add some like chromatic notes in sparingly amongst that and really outline the chord before we go full chromatic craziness okay um, it's like, it's, you know, putting the cart before the horse, it's trying to run before we can walk. What we really want to be able to do is do a really great job of outlining the chord before we go crazy. And then, you know, opposite. You can add in that chromatic stuff, but don't overcomplicate it to start with. Make sure you can outline the chord and somebody could listen to your bass line. This is, here's a key thing, right? Somebody can listen to your bass line and they'll be able to hear the chords go by without anybody else playing. So I should be able to sit down and play a walking bass line. And somebody who knows this standard will be able to tell me what it is. Okay, uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. If you know what that standard is, put it in the uh, in the comments. But don't overcomplicate it. Make sure somebody can listen to your walking line and they can tell the tune exactly what it is without anybody else playing the melody or with you, as a matter of fact. Okay, and the next thing as well, don't get glued to roots. Don't get glued to roots. So... When you're playing, when you're outlining these, these chords, we don't need to start every phrase with a root note. It's going to be really natural for us to do that because we're bass players, we play a lot of roots, right? Okay, it's what we do a lot of the time. But we need to be able to 
remove ourselves from, from thinking about it like that and really be able to use um, or at least start a phrase on other notes within the measure. And you don't have to not play the root you can just displace it. So for instance, instead of playing, um, if this was like on a C minor chord, right? Instead of playing, going to an F7, right? So starting on the C, which is the root, going up to the F7, I could play something like, okay, so what I'm doing there is on that C, I'm starting on the minor third and going down. I'm displacing the root and I'm, I'm ending up on the root. Minor third, second, root, flat seven, to the third of the F7, okay? So it sounds like this. Instead of, okay? Now, each one is fine. You can use both, but what I'm saying is, you know, try and break free from the roots a little bit so you're not always starting every phrase, every walking line that you do on a root note, okay? So just to wrap that up, your feel, no daylight between the notes. Make sure that the really fat round quarter notes, not too many crazy triplets or articulations. Your sound, play closer to the neck, right? Get that fatter sound. Get your EQ right, don't be scooping the mids on the amp or boosting the treble, flatten that off a little and if you've got a tone on your bass, crank it all the way down, or that's what I like to do as well. And then your note choice, don't overcomplicate. I know we all want to play crazy chromatic lines but let's make sure that we can actually outline the chords, cut the chords first and then don't get glued to the roots, okay? They're good, we need to be able to play them, we need to know, you know, where are all over the neck. Okay, we need to know where our root notes are and all of the notes of the chords are all over, all the, um, over the entire neck, but we need to be able to not get out of that root first mindset, okay? Now, if you wanna learn more about walking bass lines, Scott's Bass Lessons um, has co-created an amazing walking bass line course with a fantastic a bass player, Ed Friedland, who I learned walking bass lines from. I learned all this stuff from Ed. Um, he's probably the most published uh, bass uh, tutor in the world ever with all these books and stuff like that. But what we've done is co-created a fantastic walking bass line course with him. I'll put the link below if you want to check it out because enrollment closes like now, like probably tomorrow or the next, actually I think tomorrow. So if you're watching this after the fact, if you click the link and you go through and you hit a a page, a dead end where you can't get the course, I'll make sure there's a wait list there for you so you can, you know, you can put your name down and sign up for next time we do it because we generally open it once or twice a year. Obviously, it's open for enrollment now. I'd love for you to check it out and we're giving away like 11 hours worth of bonus content as well. Me doing like three or four hours teaching, walking baseline, all of this stuff, but in huge detail and Ed doing a ton, like hours and hours of stuff as well. Um, you know, just all good stuff when it comes to walking bass lines. Now, obviously, if you're not subscribed to Scott's Bass Lessons channel, do that below and click your notifications on. And other than that, guys, take it easy. And as always, I'll see you in the shed.